The inquiry held was closer to the date of incident than the inquiry held later on. The evidence given by the witnesses could have been more reliable and dependable. There was no valid reason for the witnesses to depose falsely and incorrectly. In matters of such inquiries, the oral evidence given by the witnesses and more so the eyewitnesses is equally or on occasions more reliable than any documentary evidence. The accident had taken place in the time of war. After the war was over, the governments in the country of accident and the neighboring countries were exchanged. The documents relevant to the incident and things relating to it could not have been safely preserved or stored or could have been destroyed or burnt in the accident. Absence of these documents would not weigh heavily against the availability of the oral evidence given by the unbiased eyewitnesses and others. Therefore, it would not be judicially prudent to attach less importance 
to the findings given by the Shah Nawaz Committee. The findings given were not inconclusive. They were unambiguous, clear and convincing. It is not easy to disbelieve the findings and brush them aside and in their place to accept the findings given in an inquiry which took place nearly 50 years later and which was not conclusive and according to which no definite finding could be pronounced in a matter of inquiry. While assessing the credibility of the findings, we cannot afford to lose sight of this rationale. The finding of the Shanawas committee convinced many, and it seems, for reasons known to them, failed to convince a few. The fact that inquiries made by an Indian journalist, an American and a British, which were of the same kind, also did not find favour with the few persons who had doubts about the findings. It seems that majority of the population in the country did not share the doubts and were inclined to think that a great Indian leader was no more in his physical form in the world. Khosla Commission was constituted to look into the matter again. It was done to remove the doubts entertained by a few citizens. The commission was headed by a judge and had to function under the Inquiry Commission Act. It went to the country where the accident took place to the country where the ashes were kept and examined the witnesses who were available at that time. Legal acumen to assess the validity and reliability of the evidence given by the witnesses and evidence produced certainly was used by the Commission. The report given was unambiguous and conclusive. A few lines of it can be quoted to point out the nature of the report. Quote, I therefore find it proved beyond all reasonable doubt that Bose travelled in a Japanese bomber from Turin to Taihoku on the morning of 18th August 1945. The plane crashed to the ground, broke into two parts and caught fire. In this fire, the pilot and General Shide died instantaneously and of the other men on board, co-pilot Ayogi died later and Bose also succumbed to his burn injuries during the course of the following night. His body was cremated and ashes were taken to Tokyo." Unquote. The question before us is why a report of this nature should be discarded in favour of a report which is of inconclusive nature. There was no reason for the Khosla Commission to arrive at wrong conclusions. There was no reason for the witnesses to depose falsely. If all facts are borne in mind, it would be easier to rely upon this report than any other report of inconclusive nature. The third inquiry was ordered in the period of the previous government and a judge of the Supreme Court was given the responsibility to discover fact. This inquiry was expected to do its job in six months time. It completed its task in six years time. The commission could have asked for the documents from the government which had brought it into existence. Enough time was available for it to get the necessary documents. Nearly more than four years were at its disposable. Why the documents were not got from the previous government? Could it be explained in a convincing manner? I think it cannot be done. The findings given in the previous reports are conclusive and hence more reliable. Therefore, the question is why the previous findings should not be preferred and the third finding should be referred. The government has preferred the findings of the two previous inquiries and not the third finding because it is inconclusive and not definite. I think the government has not done any mistake or wrong in doing so. The government was criticized for having delayed the submission of the action taken report and the report of the commission in time. The law provides that it should be submitted to the legislature in six months time. They were submitted in six months and a few days period. The reason given for delay are not unexcusable. The commission was appointed to give a report in six months time and it took more than six years time. This reality should be compared with the delay of a few days caused in submitting the report of the inquiry and the action taken report. That would put the matter in correct perspective. It was also said that no cogent reason were given for having not accepted the report and for having rejected it. The reasons were given. Only thing is, they were not reported fully. 
The reboots are given fully on this occasion when all aspects relating to the report and its comparison with other two reports are done. I do not know if all the points given in the discussions today would be reported or not. If they are not reported, allegations can be made that no valid reasons were advanced even in the debate on the subject. Two or three columns in a newspaper or a few seconds visual on the TV cannot cover the valid points and all cogent arguments. Lacunae in reporting could generate mistaken perception and misunderstanding. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose was the darling of the masses and more revered by the congressmen and patriots of all shades and opinions. Whenever doubts were raised about his whereabouts and existence, steps were taken to find out the facts. Not once, but three times. And all the help and assistance was provided to unravel the factual position. In view of these facts, should we hold that no steps were taken to know if he were alive or not? The government had decided to confer the Bharat Ratna on him posthumously to revere his memory. If a person is not found to be living for seven years generally, he is supposed to have died. This fact should have been borne in mind while objecting to conferment of the highest award in the country. The reports given could also have been borne in mind, but this was not done. Why? This should be explained. Comments can be given, but we do not want to enter into dispute of this nature and we leave this issue to the people to decide. The statues and portraits put in the parliament and other official buildings are indications of the desire to respect and perpetuate his memory. He is always mentioned in a very respectful manner. All the leaders pay obeisance to his memory and try to put his view and opinion to practice to strengthen the country and develop a people. The concept of planning was very near and dear to him. That was adopted to build a country's infrastructure and industry, trade and agriculture, science and technology. He was for democracy, social, economic and cultural justice for one and all. These principles have been incorporated in the basic law of the country and in the policy of the government. If these are not the ways to pay homage to the great souls, what are the other ways in which respect to them can be shown? Let us not fall prey to political consideration. Small concepts cannot produce great and good results. Great men are great because of the great thoughts and concepts. Let us follow them in their footsteps by avoiding to fall in traps of narrow-mindedness. Why any government would not be interested in not respecting the great hero of the freedom struggle? Are we respecting him by keeping this dispute alive or trying to disrespect other great leaders? Let this be understood by the people. Anything which is acceptable to all of us to respect his memory can be done by us. If there is anything of the nature, please suggest and we would accept it. The government is not in a position to say that the commission gave its report which is conclusive and acceptable. The report has not said as to how Netaji died, where he lived and why he lived away from his dear motherland. How can this kind of ambiguous report be accepted by all of us?